My name is Jeff Rao. I'm the gallery director and university curator here at Biola. And uh, this afternoon I'm here with Neri Gabriel Lemus, who's an LA based artist, uh, represented by Charlie James Gallery in LA, and uh, uh, has exhibited in a number of places, nationally and internationally. Perhaps most notably, uh, you may have recently seen his work at the LA County Museum of Art in uh, a big group exhibition on football. And uh, um, Today, he's here on the occasion of an exhibition that we've been able to host here at Biola uh, called I Was a Stranger and You Welcomed Me. So uh, we wanted to have the opportunity to, uh, to chat with Neri about that most recent work. And uh, we're very excited to have you here with us. Thank you. And uh, just uh, to have a little fun while we chat, uh, we thought it might be fun to play a little game of, uh, of Jenga. So uh, as we go, uh, we'll find our tower moving. Taller and taller. Hopefully we'll be quite successful. <laughs> I hope so too. But uh, just to start us off, uh, this recent project, uh, Neri, focuses on um, a lot of uh, your own kind of personal story or your family's story as uh, being an immigrant family. And uh, I thought maybe since not everyone that's viewing this video maybe has seen the show, uh, you might be able to give us a little bit of your background uh, story and your family's story that uh, inspired uh, the recent exhibition. Uh, well, both of my parents uh, immigrated from Guatemala here to uh, um, the United States. And um, so, you know, growing up in a bicultural experience, it has to and has informed my practice as an artist. Um, so within this, this work, um, I kind of started started to uh, um, some time back really reflect on my experiences just growing up, and so my last show that I had really focused on fatherhood and my father, mm -hmm. and so this one, when I was thinking about it, um, I started to focus more on my mother and those experiences that I had growing up, um, and the just the the kind of perseverance and the things that she did as a mother for me and my brother growing up. And uh, so I just wanted to, in, in one way, pay homage to it, but in, in another way also be able to talk about some pretty difficult, you know, topics, but through um, this personal narrative as well, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, a lot of your uh, previous projects, uh, you know, you mentioned your, your most recent um, previous project uh, having to do with uh, really um, men and a sort of crisis of, uh, of um, great role models, yeah. especially among, um, in a lot of uh, uh, urban and minority communities in particular. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this show does seem to really, in a lot of ways, um, bring together um, a lot of different concepts that uh, that you've explored previously. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously, that's that's one of them being the uh, uh, issue about kind of um, strong role models. Yeah, uh, and in, mm -hmm. in the previous case, uh, there being a very lack uh, a dearth of strong role models, and perhaps in this case, your mom really functioning as a very positive role model yeah. uh, in your life. But um, you also have addressed a lot of issues about um, racial tensions um, and. Uh, uh, concerns uh, over immigration, um, a lot of uh, pretty politically charged topics. And, um, you know, I'm struck on how the focus on, a, uh, on your personal story um, manages to av avoid maybe um, some of the minefields that we walk into uh, when we try to dialogue about these things. Um, and, uh, uh, I mean, I guess you mentioned that, that you feel or acknowledge that it's tough concepts to talk about. But um, what are some of the devices or strategies that you feel like maybe you have used uh, to, to be able to open up some of these tough conversations about race without uh, it quickly devolving into a, a highly kind of politicized, um, more shrill, um, you know, monologue? I, I think yeah. it feels very warm and inviting. Yeah. Um, well, basically, I have, I have, uh, I guess, I've always had like two ways of, you know, approaching how I create art, and one of them is in a more um, poetic way, and by that I mean that I use, 
you know, uh, references or, or ideas um, that basically just, in, in some respect, um, point, point to experiences um, that have within them these um, social issues, but they're not as direct. Um, so it's making kind of like these metaphoric connections between things. Um, and in the most simple way, kind of seeing the beauty in life and in, in, in different experiences, you know. Um, like, I, like one example of that I could say is I did this body of work of migrating birds and people migrating. And it was basically just making the connection between the idea of birds migrating and people migrating and, and why they migrate. Um, why do birds migrate? You know, what's, what are the kind of things that um, they face within migration that perhaps people who migrate also might face? So it's not saying, oh, these are my belief systems or whatever. It's just making a comparison and then the viewer is able to kind of um, just take it and um, begin to form their own ideas and not necessarily be directed in, in that respect. But um, at, at another level, I also believe in being direct, you know. Um, and it's kind of how we are as people, you know. It's, at certain points, we are, um, um, things, you know, might bother us a certain way and we have to react, you know. <coughs> And then at certain times we think about things in, in a different way and we have a different approach, you know. I mean, even, even in the church, you know, there's certain, certain, certain times you deal with certain things a certain way, certain times you deal with them a, a different way, I mean. Um, so those are kind of the, the two um, kind of uh, directions I go when I, when I, you know, create work. And uh, um, pretty much, you know, um, it's... I don't have a, I don't have a percentage like I do this amount of percentage you know for this poetic work and this amount for this direct work it just you know depending on the space or the ideas it pretty much just starts forming and you know works organic that way. Well playing um, or maybe relating to the kind of poetic uh, references that you were talking about I, I've noticed that uh, you use a lot of humor um, in your work as well. Mm -hmm. um, a number of the uh, uh, the works in the current exhibition, or at least two of them, two of the paintings, make direct kind of uh, references to, uh, um, you know, my mother is uh, is not from outer space, or yeah. my mother has not uh, flown a UFO. I think those are the, yeah, the yeah. quotes yeah. from the painting. Um, and uh, and so obviously there's this allusion to, uh, you know, the, our language and referring to people as alien. Yeah. Um, and uh, maybe how that, um, I don't know if it's necessarily how that is perceived or maybe misconstrued in a, in a humorous way in yeah. a sort of child's mind. And, yeah. and I think you had maybe alluded that these are um, maybe comments or thoughts that you had had as a kid growing up, hearing people talk about um, you know, uh, immigrants as, as alien. Yeah. But um, uh, of course there is also a certain otherness about that experience. Um, and uh, using humor to kind of uh, to kind of call a, a attention to that, but also to um, uh, address it in a kind of lighthearted way, yeah. um, you know, is does help to kind of maybe break down um, some of those barriers. And um, uh, I mean, have you have you thought very intentionally about the use of humor in your work? Uh, of course, most definitely. I think that um, whenever you're dealing with some difficult topics, I mean, it sometimes. Um, just laughing about it or just, uh, you know, finding some sort of humor to communicate um, gives you like an entry point where you're able to begin talking about it and, and kind of, uh, um, I don't know, and I remember I, I did these kind of domestic violence scenes that were like from comic books um, Mexican novella comic books, and if they were they, if they were look realistic, it's they wouldn't be as easy to enter. You know, You're saying the the images because the, the images, images are exactly are in a very kind right. of abstracted comic book yeah. style. Yeah, 
and and so it allows you know the viewer to be able to um, you know have access to navigating through the space where the work is at and because you know people's association with these images they're they're able to um, images what I mean by that images that are um, not not realistic they're more cartoonish they're able to enter it and then when they realize what the topic is it's it's uh, it, it gets deep so it has this multi-dimensional so with those paintings um, it has that the same quality and uh, some people might say, well, it kind of feels like one-liners or whatever, you're being very direct and, uh, you know, uh, uh, my mother's never flown in a UFO, you know, these sort of things. But, you know, at, at some point when you think about a particular racial slur or a particular, you know, um, word that triggers something in a particular group of people, um, you know, I, I can never know what it is to be uh, an African American man and be called the N word. Mm. I just would never be able to know that. Mm. You know, I could imagine there's certain words that are associated with Latino culture that, when I hear, they're bothersome to me. Um, mm -hmm. But so sometimes someone might look at that and, and not understand it for where where it's coming from. But when you you realize that that has caused you know hurt in people to be just be called an alien um then you understand why it's being contextualized the way it's 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 been done and um um and why it's direct in that same way you know and uh, even though it might sound it might sound like just one dimensional but when you actually look at it and think about it 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 uh it has different levels you know and humor is a, a big role in that that plays a part in that yeah, I mean, I, I guess humor, it, um, it offers us the opportunity to maybe reconsider our words um, in, uh, um, in a very real way, but in, in a way that doesn't seem threatening. Uh, I'm a lose, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, your, your use of, um, of humor in, in that regard, I think, um, it, uh, it is... It is uh, a really strong way to um, uh, to call attention to the importance of, of language. You know, the the words that we speak have consequence, yeah, and um, and they mean something. And uh, you know, it's sort of um, non-threatening, if you will, a non-threatening way to enter into that conversation um, to utilize humor. But uh, but as you say, there's a sort of secondary moment where uh, where you sit back and you think like, oh well, you, uh, you know uh, that that does, um, calling someone an alien, um, even if uh, the, the other associations that we have with it are kind of extreme uh, with extraterrestrial and, yeah. and sort of uh, obviously um, um, the way that you've used it, it's intended to, to be a humorous uh, yeah. reference and not uh, to suggest that anyone is uh, immediately uh, uh, saying that your mother actually came from outer space. Yeah. But, uh, but upon kind of further reflection, you know, we, we realize that this, uh, that if we continue to call people alien, yeah. um, that there there's a strong association with otherness there. That we're we're constantly separating. I was just thinking about that as you were talking about uh, that, uh, talking about that. Yeah, yeah that rather otherness. than than um, uh, offering opportunities for connection and engagement with people, yeah. you know, th using these kinds of uh, this kind of language, um, even in subtle ways, continues to kind of reinforce um, the separation between. Uh, groups of people rather than finding points of connection to bring right. us together. Um, and uh, I, I think that those points of connection seem to be another really major element of, uh, uh, um, you know, maybe the more serious work that, mm -hmm. uh, I don't mean serious to suggest that uh, yeah. the humor work is, is not to right. be taken seriously, right. but um, the, uh, you know, I'm thinking about uh, the video in the current show that you have where uh, you're going on a journey with your son. Yeah. Um, tracing the steps uh, that you used to travel uh, with your own mother as she, you went to work uh, with her. Yeah. Um, as um, uh, uh, she worked uh, doing- uh, Housekeeper, she was Yeah, housekeeper. housekeeping yeah. work uh, for another family. So you would uh, often go to work with her. And so you're yeah. kind of retracing this step and there's a lot of that, uh, that experience that I think is, is relatable to people 
uh, in thinking about their own relationships uh, with, uh, with their parents or uh, if they have children, you know, their relationship with their children. And there's a, um, uh, the, um, uh, the photographic work that you included in the, in the current show, uh, which is um, sort of re-photographing old family photos, uh, again, from this experience of, of you living life um, as an immigrant family uh, alongside uh, the family um, who inc incidentally is a, a white, uh, reasonably well-to-do family uh, that uh, is employed or has employed your mom. Um, and, uh, and, and rather than, than sort of uh, looking at alien and uh, emphasizing the kind of otherness of this, these photos are all uh, kind of intimate family moments, but there's um, around the periphery of the photo, uh, kids, other kids from the family, or um, you know, their their family photos of you and your mom in a kind of um, uh, you know a warm, tender moment. But you're in somebody else's ha uh, home, in uh, uh, kind of surrounded by um, the uh, these sort of things that signify. Um, the other family that really welcomed you mm -hmm. into their home, um, not just as an employer, but also in a very personal way. Yeah. Um, and uh, those opportunities uh, maybe conversely, um, uh, as opposed to the, the work uh, s focusing on kind of otherness, yeah. um, really uh, focuses on a family coming together and kind of bridging economic barriers, bridging cultural barriers. Uh, and welcoming people into their home. There's, mm. That seems to be another theme, I think, that comes out a lot in your work is, uh, on the one hand, pointing out all of these uh, places where we continue to separate people and maybe challenging them through, uh, through humor, but also um, uh, you know, showing from your own experience uh, these opportunities where there was connection and there was commonality yeah. found. Uh, that common ground, I think, seems to be mm. um, something that comes up a lot in your work. And, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because when I do talk to other people about my work, that's exactly what um, what I go to. I, I start I talk about being able to, in some way, like within the art world, there's a lot of uh, criticality and, and critique of things, right? Um, and what I kind of feel sometimes uh, can be lacking is, well, if that's wrong, well, what is right? Mm. So mm -hmm. I, I like to include that to see where things, to show where things are working. Um, and in, like in those experiences, it's that cross-cultural, you know, um, uh, connection. How are you doing there? Oh, it's a little rough. All right, good. All right, but I got it. it. <laughs> uh, it's so cross-cultural connection. Yeah, it's a, it's a cross-cultural connection that, um, exemplifies um, really the notion of love, you know, mm. um, where my mother started working for Mary Pat, this family, and um, there she was welcomed to the point where I went with her, my brother went with her as, as kids, and that is unheard of. Mm -hmm. No employer is gonna let you take your child to work with him, mm -hmm. you know, and the grandchildren were there and, and I would play with them and we were like family and celebrated Christmas and Thanksgiving with them. And so um, it's that cross-cultural experience where, you know, my mother was a stranger and she was welcomed, you know. Yeah. And um, uh, these, you know, uh, you know, I'm married and have kids, these things of uh, ideas of family and uh, are important to me and so I want my son to be able, you know, through that video I wanted him to be able to experience what I did with my mom and I and experience it with him with him as well, you know, so. I think uh, it seems to me that this challenge to, to find um, a kind of a hopeful way through uh, or beyond uh, that, that criticality is um, uh, maybe a, a really um, a great challenge for us in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, not necessarily, well, it is a challenge in terms of being difficult, but I mean that, that the, the way in which you address these, these things uh, offers a challenge to us as, as a viewer, and um, specifically in the church, some of the most recent work um, directly 
quotes uh, quotes Christ mm -hmm. and other uh, biblical stories, mm -hmm. and um, points to the way in which Christ constantly uh, welcomed those who uh, were on the fringes of society and often um, sort of ignored or ostracized um, by uh, uh, by the Jews of his time. Yeah, and uh, and was constantly challenging people to to um, to welcome those people to uh, in a pretty extreme uh, way, oftentimes. Uh, I mean, in, in ways that kind of, um, uh, you know, co uh, exp I want to say exploded their categories, you know, that yeah. uh, the, the current culture of the time yeah. was, uh, um, you know, expected that um, um, the Jewish community w should remain kind of separate from, uh, from those around and uh, um, maybe more, more holy, uh, but the the kind of uh, warm and personal way in which he interacted with people from um, uh, who were outside of those uh, communities yeah. was uh, really mind-boggling yeah. to those around him, and um, that uh, pointing to that as, as a sort of mirror mm -hmm. um, is um, uh, you know, a real challenge to us today to, yes. to rethink those who are uh, on the margins of our contemporary society. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, the the title uh, of the show itself, I Was a Stranger and You Welcome Me, yeah. as, as you point out, um, refers specifically in the context of this show to a video in which you're interviewing uh, your mother and uh, uh, the woman, Mary Pat, that you mentioned, um, talking about uh, uh, you know, you expressing sort of thankfulness to uh, to Mary Pat and talking uh, with your mother about her experience coming and being uh, really welcomed into into this home and what a uh, dramatic um, um, difference that made, I guess, in uh, in in your life uh, yeah. from maybe stepping back now and seeing uh, the experience of many other immigrant communities yeah. or other immigrant families that, that you recognize that was a fairly unique experience. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but it of course also um, refers to, um, uh, to the, the quote of Christ and yeah. uh, talking about um, the ways in which, uh, you, you know, when we welcome uh, strangers and uh, um, Whatnot. The, the, so there's two layers there. It refers yeah. both to you and also to the to the biblical narrative. Yeah. Um, did uh, uh, there's there are a number of other biblical references in, yeah. in the current work. And how did you uh, uh, come to make that connection in terms of uh, uh, drawing that out and sort of pointing to it in a contemporary way? Yeah. Well, do, as you, do you know what I'm. I know asking? exactly. No, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Jeff. Um, and um, for me. Despite where you, oh, that was a good one. <laughs> Despite where you stand in the, um, in the, the you know, immigration debate, mm -hmm. if you're a Christian um, and you believe in, in love, and essentially that's what scripture is about, it's love, you know, it's a love story, you know, and the greatest commandments, you know, mm -hmm. love your brethren as yourself and love God while your heart, mind, and soul, you know. Basically, it's saying, I mean, you can encompass everything in that. Um, but again, whether you stand, whatever side you stand in the debate, um, there's still this, um, I know we talked about this, there's, there's still this compassion that you have for, for human beings and people, you know. Um, I, I, and I, and I, I think of certain groups that go out and protest, against homosexuality, you know, call, using names, being homophobic. We were never called to do that as Christians, you know what I mean? Um, and, um, or, you know, most recently, which to me, it, it, it's, so, it's so troubling that sometimes it's hard to talk about, but a busload of young children mm. and, and the shouts of, Adults. And these were the Im immigrant children that had, right. had come across the border without their families. Right. And um, and and so it doesn't matter where where you have to have compassion. You know what I mean? It's like, um, and when you, you know, to me that's 
that's what um, scriptures are uh, emblematic about, you know. Um, and some of these scriptures that, you know, um, like there's one scripture in the Who, in the who Is My Neighbor, mm -hmm. you know. I was thinking about that piece yeah. uh, as well. That's a quote that you pick up. Right. In one of the current pieces. Yeah, and Who Is My Neighbor, or I Was a Stranger in Egypt, you know. I mean, these are all these biblical kind of narratives that I've come to uh, hold dear to me because it does talk about this inclusion and it does talk about, you know, what you do with the, the marginalized and, you know, historically points to differences that people had and how, how people dealt with them, you know. Jesus, you know, telling the story of the Good Samaritan and, um, you know, having you know, this Jewish individual really um, think about that this Samaritan is his neighbor, even though there's tensions between both of the cultural groups. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. It's like causing this person to rethink, you know, about their own positions of, uh, in their, you know, in their own prejudices, you know, so. Um, yeah, that, um, the. It's my turn, right? I think so. Okay. Yeah. The uh, uh, who is my neighbor question that gets raised in one of the, the current pieces that, uh, that you were just talking about, um, you know, that, um, uh, that directly refers to that story about the, the Good Samaritan and, um, uh, you know, Christ sort of challenges his audience, ooh, right off the bottom. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> one. Um, challenges his audience uh, at the end of that story to say, you know, um, uh, the uh, the Samaritan man that stopped to care for the um, uh, the individual that had been uh, had been robbed and beaten along the side of the road that uh, um, even though he would be seen as an outsider uh, yeah. you know he's the one that um, that showed compassion um, and uh, um, uh, you know so uh, and so he asked the question you know, who which of these was a neighbor to, to the man and yeah. um, uh, one of the things that struck me as I went back and looked at that story in light of uh, the current the current show, I mean, uh, it was interesting. Uh, I, you know, thank you for kind of giving me occasion to kind of re look at <laughs> some of these old stories. Uh, you know, we're so familiar with some of these biblical stories that we um, uh, we miss things. Like we we think we know what the story's about, um, and so when we have an opportunity to look at them in a new light and with maybe new connections made. Um, uh, we, f we find new, um, new things kind of coming forward in the text. And one of the things that really struck me, if I remember correctly, is uh, uh, the thing that he praises and sort of elevates about, uh, about the Good Samaritan in that story is not uh, his uh, compassion and love for um, his fellow man, but the mercy that he shows him. He specifically uh, identifies it as, uh, as mercy that was shown to this man. And um, uh, in, in the contemporary context, uh, you know, maybe bringing it back or, or pointing to that, uh, the story that you told of the, you know, the immigrant, or not the story you told, but you uh, mentioned uh, the uh, busload of immigrant children that were, um, you know, being moved from sort of one federal uh, holding facility to another and how, um, uh, you know, uh, masses of people showed up to, to sort of, in the, in the heat of the uh, current immigration debate to kind of shout uh, down these um, uh, these children that have you know don't have a home right yeah. now um, you know regardless of, of what you think about um, the kind of legality of their action or regardless of um, you know how uh, we might um, look at kind of uh, addressing the sort of structural um, concerns around immigration in our current society like um, how can we say that that's an action of, of, you know, mercy and compassion to these people? We may be justified in some way to say that, uh, you know, these people have entered illegally or whatnot, but, but as fellow humans, as other, others uh, who are similarly uh, created in God's image, like how, how is that action uh, us showing mercy? Um, that's been a, a real, uh, a real challenge, uh, I think, to me to kind of to, to think about um, uh, that which Christ calls us to um, to show um, in that context. Um, well, 
I, I wanted to raise a question while we're playing Jenga here. You had mentioned earlier, uh, I know we're changing gears a little bit here, but no, uh, no when we were on our way over and uh, we were talking about uh, this sort of d um, playing Jenga as we as we talked, you mentioned that you saw an interesting kind of metaphor in this uh, game yeah. uh, as it relates maybe to, to your work or yeah. uh, these concerns. Yeah, so no, um, no, no, yeah. Uh, talk about that. I'm glad, I, I'm glad, I mean, we're doing this, you know, because, uh, I mean, if you look at my work, um, I'm, I pay very close attention to detail and labor and, and what I do, I, you know, I just, that's just me, you know. And so the construction of the Jenga Tower, um, it's, you could see that there's a lot of pieces that come together to create this, this piece. So I think about it, how my practice works, you know. And as I'm dismantling it or trying to figure out what's going to work, I try to, I try one thing and it, it, it doesn't work and so I try another thing and it doesn't work and then finally something works. And this is how it is with my practice, you know. Um, I'm not this individual who has this particular style that if you look at my work it all looks the same, you know. I have, I'll do photography, I'll do video, I'll do painting, I'll do drawing. Sometimes my drawing is very realistic, sometimes it's more cartoonish. It depends, you know. And so, these are the sort of pieces of the tower. Yeah, these sort of are the, the sort of metaphor. pieces, you know, and at, and at some point, um, you know, it, when it falls apart, is, <laughs> it could be a completion, not necessarily something failed. It could be it came to completion and then have to start all over again, you know. Yeah. So, and, and that's how I kind, of, I kind of view this, you know. Um, um, so it's, it's, a, it's a good, I think it's a good metaphor for, for an artist's practice, you know. <laughs> so. The sort of challenge of, of constantly yeah. trying to find those pieces to pull out and to yeah. I mean the, continue the, the, to build it up. For sure. And the artist, I mean, uh, another word for artist could be creative problem solver, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do, you know. We try to problem solve in the most creative way that we can, you know. So, and then sometimes we have some things that just happen that are pretty amazing, you know, like that one that I got from the bottom. Did, is it my <laughs> turn now? I think it is, uh, yeah. although I lost track, to be totally frank. Okay, I think it is, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, those, those sort of things and stuff. Well, while you uh, work out one more, uh, a final question. Uh, just as, um, as an artist of faith active here in, um, uh, in the Los Angeles area, where we are uh, uh, an international city, mm -hmm. Uh, with a lot of world-class artists. Uh, I wanted to take the occasion to ask you, um, uh, you know, as an artist of faith, uh, who are some, some other artists maybe in, uh, that are currently doing work, uh, hopefully maybe here in, in Los Angeles, but also more broadly if you wanted to address that, but mm -hmm. uh, other people that, that you think maybe we should look to uh, as um, in the church and uh, within the Christian community, uh, other artists that are doing really, um, interesting and challenging work that we should pay attention to? I don't know. <laughs> it's very oh, they're hard. They're out there. They are, they're out there, but it's like saying you're a Christian in the art world is like uh, saying like you have some sort of disease or something. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, very, it's very hard, you know. Um, I think that's why, uh, you know, since you're one that's, that's uh, doing this with some great uh, success, um, you know, we wanted to pick your brain a little bit and yeah, see who else I mean, is out there. There's, I mean, I, I'm sure you know Lynn Aldridge, you uh, know. Sure. Mm -hmm. She does, uh, um, I mean, her work tends to be very formal. There's, there's some really good stuff going on there. Um, uh, I think her earlier stuff that, I, that I've seen really, uh, I curated this show not that long ago and I had one of her pieces and it, it was, you could clearly see this, you know, imagery of, of Christianity within that work. Um, uh, there's, there's others, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of been wanting to meet some others because <laughs> I don't know, I mean, there's, there's some, I mean, Todd Gray is an artist that I know that he's a believer, um, African-American artist, and he does some really interesting work. Um, but uh, um, really, it's, it's, uh, I get surprised when I, when I find out someone's a believer, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine, Nate Young, you know, he's in Minnesota. He, he's a believer as well, and he's actually, we graduated in the same class. Um, uh, but yeah, there's, it, it's, yeah, oh, it's not, yeah, I, I, I want to find out uh, 
about more artists uh, to be able to um, build a community. Yeah, build a community. I mean, and of course, you know, you know, teachers here who are artists who 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 work at Biola, yeah. um, they're Christians as well. So. Well, we're always, uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be sure to look up uh, Nate, uh, what was Nate Young. Nate Young. Uh, I actually don't know his work, but uh, yeah. thank you very much for spending time with us here today. Sure. And yeah. um, uh, for those of you who are viewing uh, this conversation on the web, I do want to let you know, if you haven't had the opportunity to see the current exhibition, we will have a catalog uh, online that will be forthcoming. So hopefully you'll have the opportunity to check out some of uh, Neri's work um, uh, in the future. Thank you very much.